Hey everyone, we're back with another tutorial in Cubase. Today I'm gonna give you six tips about how to make templates work for you. Let's get into it. All right, everyone, so it's that time of year again. The weather is getting colder. We're spending less time outdoors, more time indoors. And that means that we have the opportunity to make more music often. And I've been making a rock project, just recording and demoing out songs, and I've been using a template, and I find that a template is infinitely helpful, not only because you don't have to set stuff up every time, it's just ready for you when you want to work on a new project, or you have an idea, or you're doing songwriting, but also, a template can often serve to limit the options available to you. In the days of modern recording, there is so much you can do that you can get bogged down in the little details. And sometimes songwriting is sort of about getting the sound into the DAW, sort of like getting the words on a page, and then you can tweak it from there, but you can get lost in the weeds. So sometimes a template keeps you on track. So I'm gonna show you my rock recording template and give you six tips about making templates that I found useful for me. So let's just create a new project with this template. You can see right here, rock recording template. And the first thing you'll notice is how quickly the project loads. And that's the first tip. The first tip is, use disabled tracks. So if you notice, if I undo these folders and I have everything foldered out and grouped out, uh, every track is disabled. And that's an option you can have just by right clicking on a track and there's enable. And if it is enabled, it'll give you the option to disable. Now I have it as a hotkey, but the interesting thing is when you do it this way also, and you look, uh, just your effects tracks and your group tracks and your input and output channels are all that you see in the mix console because none of the tracks are enabled. Then when you start using tracks, let's say you want to start recording a guitar, you enable the track and I have it as a hotkey alt D. And once it's enabled, it appears in the mix bus. So it's kind of nice because if you use the enable disable method, it'll only show up when you've enabled the track. And the nice thing about templates is you can add inserts. So I have um, frequency, a guitar rig, a different amp, another guitar rig. If I'm using this amp, this will be the after the amp effects. And then this is actually just a cabinet IR loader. And that's the nice thing about using disable and enable. These plugins don't have to load, sample libraries don't have to load, virtual instruments don't have to load. So if we uh, disable this track, you can see when the template loads, there are no virtual instruments, but they're available. They just need to be enabled. So that's tip one. Use disable and enable tracks to make your templates load faster. And it's sort of cleaner in the mix console too, as you use them. Tip number two. When I design, uh, when I design templates, I like to work from back to front. So as you'll see, these are the first tracks that I load. Uh, I have a mix bus, that's like my two bus, and, and then drums, guitars, bass, vocals, flute, keys. So I'm starting at the end, and then it's like, where will it go from there? And then the individual tracks. And then the FX tracks is also here because you can't disable those. Um, so that's just a vocal reverb. And as you can see, all these buses, they'll go to the mix bus, not to stereo out, and then the mix bus goes to stereo out. So if I want to ditch my output channel, it'll look like that. So this is kind of nice because the bus is aligned on the right and everything's routed. The vocal reverb is going to the vocals and then everything else is going to the mix bus. And then when you look at enabling some tracks, we can do guitar again because there's plenty of tracks. We'll enable all of these and all the plugins on them have to load. But you'll see eventually they'll turn white. And if we go in here, here they are on the left. And the way that I do this is with uh, the zones function. So if you see the stereo in, because I like to input monitor as on the left, the buses are all on the right zone, so they stay in the right. And then the individual tracks are in the middle. And all of these are routed to the guitar bus. So the routing is already done for you. You don't have to figure this out once you make your template. The second you start working, it's routed correctly. So if you work from back to front, I think you'll find that uh, it's easier to wrap your head around how the template will turn out. And tip number three is the divide track list function. Let's just disable these. So if you've noticed, I have a marker 
uh, track right here. And fun fact, if you hit Shift-1 on your keyboard, it goes to what the first marker. And you can do that, you know, if we add a second, if you hit Control-2 here at the 17th bar, and at the 33rd bar, if we hit Control-3, so we have 16 bar segments. If, you know, if you hit Shift-1, Shift-2, Shift-3, that's how you navigate between the numbered markers. If you didn't know that, that's a fun bonus tip. But I like the markers to be here. And even if all these tracks are enabled, and I'm working with a very full project, uh, as you see, if I scroll up and down, the markers stay put. And you do that with the divide track list function. That's this tiny little uh, thing right here. So I have it stored away here a marker track, a tempo track, a signature track, and a chord track. And I will always use a marker track in basically every production I do. I don't necessarily always change tempos, so I'll just lock the tempo in, or signatures. If I do, though, I can, let's say I do a signature change, I can sort of have it there uh, for reference while I'm tracking. You know, oh, here at the 33rd bar, it goes from 4-4 four, four to 3-4. Four. Oops. Uh, and th that's notated on the signature track. So it's nice to have these, and it doesn't matter you know, where you are, you'll be able to see them. And you do that with this function right here, divide track list. Um, and then you can drag anything you want. So if I wanted the drums up here, I could drag them there. And then the drums are always visible. Like let's say you use um, you know, the, seeing the MIDI for different parts or whatever, but I don't want that. So I'll put them back where they were. But yeah, so you can divide the track list and always have something like a marker track visible. So that's a good one to know. Tip number four is input and output routing. Um, so for instance, my vocals, let's just enable the scratch vocal. I'll record that out of the left channel of my interface. And there, the, the input routing is done. Whereas guitars, I'll record out of the right channel of my interface. And so once these enable, we can open up and you can see, right, the guitars are right and the vocals are left. So it's nice to have the input routing done. And then the output routing is just uh, easy enough to send all the guitars to guitars. But let me just show you something. Let me enable all of these. In case you didn't know, output routing is quick, most quickly done with Q-Link. So, Let's say these weren't guitar tracks, they were, uh, we wanted them to go to the vocal bus. I could just highlight all these, I could click this Q-Link, and, and as you see, all of these change. So let's say I wanted to add an effect to everything. With Q-Link, you can also do that. If I wanted to low cut everything below 60 hertz, I just type it in on one, and as you can see, it updates on all the others. Um, so once you start getting into your project and you know exactly what sound you're going for, uh, you can start doing that to all of your tracks and save yourself some time mixing as well. So that's Q-Link and that's input and output routing. Uh, let me, before I forget, route the guitars back to guitars. Okay, tip five is visibility. So as you can see, I like to use folders and folders are great when you're mixing too because if you go to visibility here, you can kill your guitar folder and then you don't have to see it or you see them all, or you can see only the ones you want. And if you don't want these buses hanging out at the right, you know, you can just kill them and you have more room to see your tracks or bring them back, or you don't want to see the effects channel. So it's nice to be able to do that at a clip. But another thing that people don't really, they kind of sleep on with folders, is let's say you have a little eight bar segment here on two different guitars and you want to repeat it. Well, you can actually just copy the folder over and it'll do it for both guitars instead of, you know, copying this, control C, coming here, control V, copying this, control C, coming here, control V. Uh, you can just copy the folder and you do that just by clicking on it, holding alt and then moving it. And so you can copy full sections of drums or where there's multiple instruments going by using folders. And I think that's a cool use of folders uh, that'll save you some time in the future. I mean, it's always good, especially with keys, there's a lot of sample libraries here. If I'm not using stuff, it's always good to just get it out of the way. So if I'm not using Patch Up or Halion or, and I'm just using Contact and a piano, uh, using visibility to get stuff out of the way, but it's nice to have it there to load if you want it. 
And then, of course, folders, you can roll them up on each other. So if you're working with drums and bass, you can just have the drums and bass visible. You don't have to have everything rolled out. So that's visibility and visibility in the mix console as well. And that brings us to tip number six, which is refine as you go. Like I said with uh, the Q-Link thing, if you wanted to do a cut at 60 hertz or 100 hertz, you could just leave it there. You could resave it as a template. You come into the template, you make that change, and you go to File, Save as Template, and you could rename it, you know? Rock Recording Template Guitar High Pass or something if you wanted to. Um, also, you may get into a project and start to decide, okay, on this album, I want to have a contact instance with uh, Mark 1, Offender Rhodes, and I want it to have a wah-wah pedal. So in order to do that, you would come into here and add a wah-wah pedal with guitar rig or whatever. And then if you wanted to use the wah-wah pedal in real time, you actually have to add a MIDI track. So we can add MIDI and wah roads or something like that. Uh, we take the MIDI routing and we route it into the guitar rig on contact, right there. And then, and so now you have the wah pedal affecting the contact. And if you know you want that for your whole project, you can sort of save that into the template. Uh, you know, have certain presets load when you load these up and change the name from contact to Fender Rhodes or whatever. And this is the Rhodes Wah Control. So you know, you play it. And, and you sort of save that in. You can dis disable these tracks. But they're there. And if you keep refining your project and you sort of know what instrumentation you want, you can start to create things faster. You won't get analysis paralysis or function fatigue. You sort of have a clear idea of the type of music you're going to make and what instruments you're going to make it with. Uh, when you enable a track and start recording into it, it's going to be routed to the correct group. And you can focus more on making music and less on doing the administrative stuff uh, involved in routing and mixing. So this has just been a quick tutorial, six quick tips on templates. I hope you found it useful. If you have, feel free to like or subscribe and take care of yourselves, everyone. Peace.